Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure, as always, seeing everybody here today on the Father Set Apart Day. And as always, we're going to have another um, dynamic speaking today, giving everybody that, um, that special oomph that you might need, that Ruach HaKodesh to get you over to the next seven days. And I pray that everybody's able to get some type of um, understanding, um, some peace and shalom with today's lesson. And like I said, it's always a pleasure to be here, to see all of the beautiful faces once again, letting us know that the Father is giving each and every one of us another opportunity to get it right. Hallelujah. 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 Right. And everybody's always thankful for that, though, right? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So first and foremost, again, the reason why you woke up this morning was because... Of the Father. Of the Father. Yeah. Because of the Father. He's giving you that yeah. opportunity to get anything that you got wrong yesterday. Make sure that you try your best to get it right today because tomorrow is not promised. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Anybody have any state they would like to share with the, uh, the congregation? Um, how the Father has been blessing them, what's been going on um, in your week, some things that you would like to try to uh, accomplish through Torah. I mean, what's, what's going on? How's everybody doing? Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> week was great. Hallelujah. Y'all gave me safe travels to and from my meeting down in Dublin, which is about two and a half hours away. Whoa. Praise y'all for that. Hallelujah. 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 It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure for that. Um, anybody else? We have guests here today uh, coming all the way from Cleveland, um, Tennessee. It's a pleasure that, um, that you're here joining us, the congregation of Yashara today. Hallelujah. It's always a pleasure um, as we start to, yeah, let's give them a chance. Working, you know, us getting to know uh, where each congregation is at. Uh, when things hit the fan, we know uh, where everybody is at in case we need to make a move. Nice. So again, but it's, it's real <clears throat> thankful. Maybe thank you that you know, you took the time out of your busy schedule to come and tabernacle with us today. It's always a pleasure to see new faces. Hallelujah. I just want to say to all y'all for bringing us here safely. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Waking us up this morning because the land of traffic is we. People, people, <laughs> Uh, we, this person just plunged in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and it's just we just thankful to be here safely. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah. yeah hallelujah. We safe travels, and we we needed it today. Hallelujah. So, uh, hallelujah. So we just we're glad to be here and to fellowship with our brothers hallelujah. and sister. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. hallelujah. Always a pleasure. Always, always a pleasure. Anybody else have anything um, they would like to share? Thanks for the Father just keeping me through the week and uh, being able to make it to another set of our spot. Hallelujah. 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 Very good. Absolutely. Um, I want to personally thank the Father for everything that he's been doing for me um, forever in his mercy, his love, and his gratitude. Um, like I always say, I can never pay the Father back for everything that he's been doing for me. Hallelujah. Just thankful. I was speaking with... Um, our brother by the name of Emmanuel, Moray Emmanuel, yesterday, and just sharing with them every single promise that the Father shared with the nation of Yisrael, beginning with our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Everybody understands that the Father kept every single promise that he made for the bride, the nation of Yisrael. So the only person now that's outside of covenant relationship with the groom is the nation of Israel. Right. It's the bride that's given the groom the problem. And time and time and time again, you have the groom asking for the bride to return because in not returning, the consequences can become very severe. To the point where it's now death. And a lot of times I don't believe that a lot of us really understand what this whole marriage covenant agreement arrangement that was made at Mount Sinai is really truly about. The covenant cannot 
be broken. Mm -hmm. Just simply cannot. <clears throat> when Yashraal said at Mount Sinai, I do, Israel became the people of the Father. You're now the people of the book, and you can't break that covenant. And to prove that you can't break that covenant, the, we're talking about now our forefathers. But that promise now that was made at Mount Sinai is even relevant, extremely relevant today. So a lot of us, we really need to do a lot of self-reflection to make sure we know what this covenant is all about. This is not something that you can walk in today and then tomorrow you decide, listen, you know what? I want to do something else. It don't work like that in Torah at all. It's better to not to make a vow mm -hmm. than once you make a vow, you're obligated to that vow for the rest of your life. Forever. Exactly. It's Olam. It's forever. Now, if you want to take the Jesus route, <laughs> okay, and you want to do the whole Christianity thing, you can pop up and do whatever it is that you want to do. <coughs> I haven't seen you in the last six months, two years, three years, four years. All right? You can play that whole game there. But in Torah, nah. You have to be consistent, and there's no such thing as retiring. All right? You can't retire this right here. The way that you get out of this here, all right, is that you live it until the end. Oh, and yeah. then at the day of judgment, the Father's going to judge and just make sure that your righteousness outweighs your sins. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let's make sure that we understand what this covenant is all about. Anybody else have anything they would like to share? Yeah, I just want to thank the Father. You know, just talking to other people. and I just thank the Father that I'm not in certain delusions of thinking of this system is going to save them or oh, come just on come on it, it is a lot it's a lot of confusion out there they think um, they think that, you know I asked them is whose face is on that dollar and they still believe in the system so I just want to thank father he's you know he's leading me through all this leading me through these steps and you know putting the right mores and um, the people around me so I just give thanks and honor to the father for that Hallelujah. 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 All the time. <clears throat> what do I need the sisters? Let's get some testimony from the sisters because uh, we always you hear a lot of groups say that the women aren't allowed to uh, voice their opinion. I mean, it's very important also for the women to show forth the praises of the Father, too. All right, they're also part of this uh, the congregation because they're supposed to be joint heirs together, also. Um, in, in the wall, in the ministry. Are there any women have anything to share? Um, to Haria, we have um, our box in the back. You know, anybody have anything? Yeah, okay, here we are. All right, let's open it up. Okay, I'm, I'm Ayalea. Ayalea? Hi, Alea. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> First, I want to say all praises to the Most High to just be here amongst uh, like-minded believers. Um, and I just want to say that I just thank him, told out to him for all that he has brought us to through and um, what's ahead and what we're experiencing now. I want to say told out for our six grands that we have the opportunity to lead them into truth. Hallelujah. Um, yeah. I don't have to go through decades of uh, being in a false religion. You know, they, it's nothing to do with religion wow. or anything yes. like that. We get to lead them in truth. I'm excited about that. I get time. I have time. I allow me time to spend with them and oh, yeah. teaching them, uh, you know, just basics and stuff like that. Right. So um, we are grateful for that. And uh, we just want to say to for y'all allowing us in y'all beautiful home and assembly. And we pray that this is not the last time that we have the yes. opportunity to come and fellowship with like-minded people. So, Hallelujah. All right. So what we're going to do from here, um, I'm going to blow the shofar seven times. We're going to face the east, and we'll have the man of the house, Abu, to bring us yeah. in with prayer. And uh, we'll go ahead and get the lesson started. And uh, filling in today for um, our executive, Moray, we have Moray Yermiyahu. Sir. All right. And he's going to uh, help me out here. 
Okay, and make sure that the train stays on the right track. All right, and we're gonna both flow with the set apart spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and do what we do best, which is give all thanks and praises to the Father. All right? Hallelujah. So we're gonna face the east. down into that garbage can, Father God, and pulled the nation of Yahshua out of it. Hallelujah. We were clean, we were smelly, and we were everything bad. Absolutely. And Father, you pulled us out and set us up and cleaned us up and let the whole world look upon us as if we were the greatest thing that walked the earth. But as Maury says over and over, over again, Israel got fat, waxed fat, and kicked. And that's what we did. But Father, we are here trying to get it right. We are here once yes. again trying to have you come in and meet us here to speak through the mores so that we will be able to receive a rhema word from you. Mm -hmm. And that then we may be able to take it into our week, Father, and it will help us to live set apart, Father. And those whom you will bring to us, Father, we will gladly speak unto them who you are and what you desire and what your will is for them and what the requirements is for them to make it into the kingdom. Because at the end of the day, Father, our desire is to bring about your will. Yes, your yes. will yes. is that every Israelite on the planet of this earth will make it into the kingdom, Father. That is your desire. Even though we know that that won't happen, Father, because of the stubbornness of Israel, we know that that is your desire, so we're going to do our part. Father, we can never repay you for what you've done for us. The mercy yeah. that you've had upon us, Father, we can never repay you, Father. But we try to start, and we try to start with this little bit of obedience of coming together on your Shabbat, the day you told us, Father, to uh, come together and again partake of the meat that we are about to receive through your word. We praise you, we magnify you, we lift you up. Those who are on their way, we ask for traveling graces. We thank you for those who made it here, those who desire but could not make it here. We ask that you would continue to, uh, to Baruch them throughout the rest of this week, Father. We ask that you look in upon More Aliyahu. You look in upon uh, the Gabar family, Father. You look in upon the um, uh, the Yeshovanot family, Father, and all of those other people who are normally come that couldn't make it. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up, Father. In your son, Yahushua's name, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Mishnikah. We're back here again today. This is the highlight of my week. Everything else becomes first, second, third, fourth, and fifth dairy. All right? Torah becomes first and foremost above all things. Without Torah, um, we're in a world of trouble. So I just want to make sure that everybody always gives 
thanks for the Father for giving us instructions on how to keep in covenant relationship with him. All right, so I'm going to always do that. Let's begin by giving all the stain to the Father, Ab Yahuwah, for his love, his mercy, his long-suffering for his people, the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad, and also his ultimate love gift. Did anybody know who and what is the ultimate love gift that the Father Ab Yahuwah sent for the nation of Israel? Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Yahusha HaMashiach, who is and was an atoning sacrifice for the covenant people, the nation of Yashra'ah. Now, the word covenant is going to be very important, as always, in every lesson that I do. But the title of today's class is called Yahuwah the Mathematician. All right. Yahuwah the Mathematician. And the reason why I decided to do that or use that title is because of uh, <laughs> an article that I read. It became in question regarding um, relationships. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But first and foremost, what we want to do is talk about Yahuwah's covenant love for his people, personal pronoun, his people, the nation of Israel. Again, so Yahuwah's covenant love for his people, the nation of Yashra'al, and we're going to have Moray to go to the book of Yeshi, uh, excuse me, the book of Joshua, uh, the 21st chapter. Okay, our big brother here, Yermiyahu. He goes to the book of Joshua, the 21st chapter. And um, we're going to do verses 43 and 45. What we're trying to do, so that everybody keeps um, pace with everything, we want to show the Father's covenant love for his people, the nation of Yashra'al. So we're ready to go. Joshua. 21, 43 to 44. 45. 43 to 45. Hallelujah. And Yahuwah gave unto Yashrael all the land which he sware to give unto their, fa unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. So we see that the father, verse 43, he made a covenant with our forefathers, and he swore to give unto their fathers a particular parcel of land, and that was accomplished. All right, be showing the Father's love for the covenant people. Read on. And Yahuwah gave them rest round about according to all that he sware unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Elohim delivered all their enemies into their hand. Mm. There failed not aught of any good thing which Yahuwah had spoken unto the house of Yashrael. All came to pass. Everybody understands what's happening here. Every single thing, every oath, every promise that the father made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, everything came to fruition. Everything that he promised a bride, it was given to her. So now, there should be an even exchange. The groom did everything that he was supposed to do, so now it's the bride's responsibility to uphold her end of the marriage covenant agreement. And the question is, collectively, as a people, did the bride keep her end of the bargain? No. no. Wow. So with that being said, my challenge is to the congregation of Yisrael and to the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad, we all need to do a self-reflection test. We all need to do that. And the best way I believe to do that is to look at the mirror because a lot of times we try to hide from ourselves. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you committed to the covenant? Ask yourself that. Because a lot of times we can pass judgment amongst or against other people. And it's hard for us now 
to take criticism. Criticism should take place first at home. And when I say at home, I mean it with each and every one of us. It's called a self-reflection test. Because according to what we just read here, the groom accomplished and did every single thing that he was supposed to do. And because of disobedience, we are now scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. This is serious. We go to the book of Tehillim. And we're still talking about Yahuwah's covenant love for his people, the nation of Yashverol. We're going to go to the book of Tehillim, the book of Psalms. Uh, more right, we're going to start at verse 44. Which chapter? Chapter 44, the book of Psalms 44. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. Everyone there? We are Tulaim 44 and 1. We have heard with our ears, O Yahuwah our Father, have told us what work thou didst in their days, in the times of old, mm. how thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand, and plantedest them, how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. Wow. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Right. So with this self-reflection test, all right, what does Psalms 44, 1 to 3 mean to Salomo? That they couldn't do anything without the Father. Hallelujah. So it wasn't by Israel's own strength and might that got them safety. Right. It was by the set-apart word of the Father who actually now prepared the way for the bride to enter into the land. Because just like we have um, our elder here, Zabu shared with us that Israel waxed fat and she kicked Meaning now was that once we got to a certain position in life, well, I did this on my own. Never giving thanks and honor to the Father. So this is the reason why we wanted to start off today's class by saying, let's make sure all the time that we don't forget praise and worship. Oh, yeah. We can't do that. We have talked about that here so many times before. Once we leave the quote-unquote Christian church and we come into the Hebrew walk, a lot of times we forget about the importance of singing and praising the Father. That's also part of the ministry. Very important, all right? So make sure that we always remember um, how to serve the Father. The book of Midbar or the book of Numbers. Moray, if you can go to the chapter 25 and just verse 19. 19. Yes, 25, 19. Excuse me? 23, excuse me, 2319. I have the master's edition. <laughs> yeah, yours don't have 25. <laughs> 2319. Yeah, numbers 2319. Is everyone there? Okay, numbers 2319, also known as the book of Barmi Bar. Right. Yahuwah is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man, that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So let's go with Yiriyah. Okay, we had your um, Yeben. Yeben, he answered um, the Tehillim question. What do you get now from the book of Numbers to 23, 19? Elohim is not a man. Or like mankind, that he should lie because man lies. Okay, he's a liar. All right. Neither the son of man, and who the son of man be? Yeah, we shall Hamashiach. That he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall not make it good? What do you get out of that? He's gonna do what he said he's gonna do. And that, did he do it? And he did. And it. he did it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Very easy. Um, question. What are the two things um, Yahuwah shared with us 
that we must do in order to have a successful relationship with him. Again, question. What are the two things Yahuwah shared with us that we must do in order to have a successful relationship with him? Moray, Yermiyahu, we're going to go to the book of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, and we're going to read verses 35. Matthew, the 22nd chapter? Yes, sir. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. 35. Verse 35. I'm all about covenants. I'm all about relationship. And I'm all about making sure that everybody treats everyone with respect according to Torah. Everything must be done in decency and order according to Torah. There's two principles that's out here today. We have what is called politically correct and what's Torah correct. And the two don't mesh together. All right. People do things even in this Torah walk based upon their feelings and what is considered politically correct. I don't deal with any of them. All right. None of them. The congregation of Yasser, we don't deal with what's politically correct. It has to be Torah based. Every single thing that you do. If you can't, I have a shirt that says this too. If you can't show it to me in Torah, I don't want to hear it. And a lot of times that becomes offensive because I've been told, well, we came to compromise. Listen, you know what? <laughs> Listen, if it's not in Torah, it's gonna like it's gonna go in one ear and go out the other. It's because you know, we can't be politically correct in, in this in this walk here. It has to be Torah. And Torah means what in Hebrew? Anybody know the Hebrew definition of the word Torah? Instructions, right? So these are the instructions, right? The teachings, the rock, so we, we all know that there. Um, so let's do that. How do we have a successful relationship with the Father of Yahuwah? Uh, the book of Matthew, Yahoo, the 22nd chapter, and we're going to have Moray to read verse 35 down to 40. Okay. So 22nd? Yes, 20, yeah, 22, 35 to 40. Everyone there? Oh, yeah. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, nope, 35 or 36? 35. You can do 34. Yeah, you start there. Let's do it then, yeah. All right. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Yahushua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Elohim, thy power, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were going on the other. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, anybody have um, Jimmy, the KG version? No? No, no Jimmy. No, okay. no, I have a KG version. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's read it loud and clear. Um, yeah, let's let's see what um, King James has to say. Um, so, where, what version is that? Um, this is King James. That's King James. Yeah, this is King James. Yeah, he was reading from King James. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you you started at verse thirty four. Um, thirty five. Thirty five. Oh, okay. That's okay. That's all right. Got you. Um, so so we're good. Let, let, just a quick recap. But when the verse thirty four. But when the Pharisee had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, um, he was a lawyer or a doctor in, in, in Torah. So this guy was a professor. He's supposed to now know Torah back and forward, forward and back, up and down, left and right. So he was a lawyer, a doctor in Torah. And he asked the Mashiach a question, tempting him. Now, this was a tempting question, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law or the greatest commandment in the law? Mashiach said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahuwah with thy Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart. Very important. With all thy heart. And with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So this is how now we have this um, successful relationship with the Father. We have to eat, breathe, sleep. Everything has to be about Torah. Mm -hmm. All of it. 
Your conversation has to be Torah based. Not saying that a person can have, have fun and everything like that, but you have to know how to have what we call constructive fun based upon Torah. So everything has to be centered around Torah to make sure that uh, we stay in good covenant relationship with them because people are watching. Mm -hmm. People are watching every single thing that you're doing yeah. because everybody is waiting for the true sons and daughters of the father to stand up. Who is going to, who is going to be that light? Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. We're going to be yeah. that light. And so now when we begin to look at Exodus, the 20th chapter, because this is basically where this is coming from, the first four commandments is talking about how we're supposed to have a relationship with the Father. That is now supposed to be a reflection on how we now deal with one another, which is the other six. And so if we can get those ten down, respecting one another, we should be okay. But the adversary has come and said, listen, you and I are enemies. And so it's kind of hard for us now to trust one another because something has been embedded in our subconscious having us to believe that we should not get along together, um, that we should intermingle with everybody. But when you begin to do that, this starts to take away from the community. Because um, I said, shared this so many times before, is where um, my father would always tell me, because he was born in Newark, is that up and down Spring, certain parts of Springfield Avenue, Hawthorne Avenue, and Fabian Place, and Elizabeth Avenue, those were like all like black-owned businesses down there. And so because of integration, what happened now was that our people st um, stopped patronizing those stores mm -hmm. and wanted to intermingle with the other nations and that became a problem, which now ran our businesses out of business. Mm -hmm. That's why it the way it is. Exactly. And so I'm just sharing here now is that the enemy has taught us that we cannot do business amongst one another. But according to scripture, mm -hmm. the father has been dealing with the Mishnah and trying to share with us how important it is for us to live as a community from day one. Hallelujah. It's been all about community living from day one. Mm -hmm. So I pray that everybody um, understands or understands the, um, the precursor or the, um, the appetizer, because we're now about to get into the lesson. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, why do you, this is the question, why do you refer to Yahuwah as your father Zabud? I need to know where everybody is at. We need to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Why do you refer to Yahuwah as your father? I read it in the Word. It says it in the Word. Yeah, it says it in the Word. It says it, absolutely. But why do you refer to Yahuwah as your father? Because these are like personal conversations that the Father's trying to have with us. Uh, it's like, well, why do you love me? You know, why do you consider me um, your father? When, when I look and see what a father is, what a father's job is, uh, no one could do it better than you. So mm. you definitely, he's the ultimate father. He fathered us all, he made us all. Wow. You know, he birthed us into the world the same way he allowed us to birth each other into the world. Hallelujah. So he is the father. The father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. And it's personal. And it's personal. It, you know? Absolutely. What Very good. Fear. 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 Yeah, absolutely. With fear comes respect. Exactly. And you need that guidance. It, 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 exactly. So there's nothing wrong with fear. With fear comes respect. I want to say he's, he's the father of this nation. He's the father of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. You know, he's the father of the Israelite nation. He's our father. He's our personal father. Yeah. Because we're going to have to bring other nations to him. So he's our father. father exactly. You know, and even when you start the prayer out, it's our father. Exactly. He's our father. You know what I mean? He's our father. He's the father of us. You know, so I just want to add that real quick. A absolutely. It's Very good. good. Very good, Maury. Now that that's understood, everyone should know that our body 
is a temple and the Ruach HaKodesh is supposed to tabernacle inside of every last one of us. That means that we're supposed to be members of his body. If everybody recognizes who the Father is, and that the Ruach HaKodesh is supposed to tabernacle inside of us, and we are his body, the Father is again, in these last days here, he's trying to build a righteous body. So the question comes now, are you now fit to be a member of the Father's body that he's trying to build? Now, in order to be a member of the Father's body that he's trying to build, you must be consistent with Torah all the time, in and out of season. Are you truly willing to dedicate your life to Torah? I mean, a lot of people say that they can do it. But there's pr uh, plenty of examples in Torah when the trials and tribulations came. You know what? I'm out of here. <laughs> like Jonah. Yeah, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And so now to walk this walk to the end, few has made it. Ezra in the Prophet. The world to come, it was made for many, but only few would enter into that kingdom. The Father is only accepting the very best. Yes. Um, you asked a question, you know, my answer is, where else can we go? Okay, mm, and yeah. I'm yeah. like the a coach here, my fear for being on the outside and the judgment that I see my fellow <clears throat> ox and the coats going through because they are work, walking uh, away from Torah. Right. Man, that's enough to put enough fear in me. Where mm. else can we go? Mm. Wow. We got yeah. to stay in Torah. We got to stay with him. Mm. Because yeah. like she said, the fear, the judgment is real. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, it you is. You see his word being fulfilled every day for those like that are walking outside of Torah. Yeah. Absolutely. So where else can we go? Absolutely. I'm the fear alone. Keep me going straight now. I, I strive. <laughs> me too. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Me too. Because his judgment is real. When it I'm is. coming home at work 12 o'clock at night and, and I'm thinking in my mind the things that could happen to me right by myself. Right. That's all I do. I think on the most high. He controls everything. Mm. And he's not going to allow nothing to happen to his children that he don't sign off on. Exactly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So yeah. Right. The fear alone and knowing that the faith that I have in him keeps me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> there's, no other, there's no other place for me to go. I don't want to be no other place but with him. Uh, absolutely. Hallelujah. <laughs> And that's the type of commitment that we all must have yes. to leave this and go with it. Right. Where are you going? <laughs> the judgment of the Father is very, very real. Yes, and like I always, wow. yeah, we don't have as much time. I believe that we think we might have. Don't be like the five unwise virgins who did not keep the oil in the land. All right, you better make sure that you stay sharp in this here. So are there any objections so far? Everybody understands that, listen, we must follow Torah until the end. Mm -hmm. Your personal feelings can't get in the way of it. Listen, everything has to be done under the instructions that the <laughs> Father gave the nation of Israel. Everybody's told. Okay, okay great. Okay. Now, we're talking about this um, Hebraic body that the Father is trying to build, and we need to know how it works. All right? How it works. Now, it works this way. The title of today's class is called Yahuwah the Mathematician. The creator and the grand architect of everything is the Father of Yahuwah. He created every single thing. And I'm going to share this today. I am not trying to prove today's um, 
theory, ideology of mathematics. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm going to look at it now solely from a Hebraic perspective. Now, looking at it now from a Hebraic perspective, we do see a lot of um, avenues being used that math teachers and mathematicians use. These symbols will be very important. The division sign. Division brings forth a card, which is um, one or oneness <coughs> equals this symbol here, which is multiplication. Multiplication. How about that multiplication? Okay, I think that's about right. Mm -hmm. So, the way that the Father is building this body is division equals a chi, the number one, the x is multiplication, which brings us now back into a chi again. But it must go through these processes. So you're going to go through process number one, process number two, which brings us back into process number three. We're going to show this mathematical equation in Scripture. Now, this is a no-brainer. Real easy. Yehovah divides the waters from the waters. Right? Everybody knows the story of Genesis. So we have our division symbol there. Yehovah again divides the waters from the waters. Yehovah divides the waters from the dry land. Yahuwah divides the light from the darkness. Now we want to talk a little bit about the multiplication um, symbol. Yahuwah multiplies or multiplied the sea creatures and the birds. Multiplication. Yahuwah multiplies the animals and mankind. Yahuwah multiplies the sun, the moon, and the stars. And we're going to talk about that. Torah principle number one. Things that are divided become a kai, and then it multiplies. And then we talked about the, um, the, these mathematical or the math symbols here, um, division, a kai, multi multiplication, and this whole process. I have a whole lot of notes here, but we're going to get this thing um, done in a timely fashion. So let's do some scriptural proof. We're going to go to the book of Bereshit. All right, the book of Bereshit. Um, Morgan, I'm going to read that one. The book of Bereshit, the first chapter, verse 5. Watch how this plays out in Hebrew, all right? And Elohim called the light, which is the or, day young. So Elohim called the light of the or, the day young, and the darkness, Choshek, he called night. So everybody sees their division. All right? We have light, but not the natural light that we see today. This or, this light is different from this light that we're seeing here. Totally different. And the evening, the Arev, and the morning, the Bukar, Bukar, were the first day. So we see all of that dividing. All right? All of this dividing here, it brought us right back to, after all of that dividing was done, it brought us back into a chi. You see how the division? It became the first day or day one or a chi. So even today, when we have what, what constitutes a day, the Father made a division in the day, which is division, but it, uh, it comprises of one um, purpose, or serving one purpose, giving us one day. So division comes back together again, bringing us to the number one point again. We told? Oh, I mean, yeah. Okay, great. Um, we're going to have more rate to go to the book of Bereshit. We're going to still stay in the book of Genesis. Uh, 
chapter 2, verse 24. Verse, chapter 2, verse 24. Let's see how the Father's doing this whole thing here. We there? Yes, I'm there. Oh, yeah. All right. Bereshit, chapter 2, verse 24. There shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Hallelujah. So, therefore shall a man leave. So there's a split. There's a division. Therefore shall a man leave his father, one, and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be a cod. One flesh. But you have two. One is singular, two is plural, which gives us multiplication. But it says now the word cleave. Let's look at that word cleave in Hebrew, which is the Hebrew word debak. Debak. What happens now with this union of coming together? These two becoming a cod one. The word debak, we have, it means to cling, to stick, to stay close, to cleave, to keep close, stick to, stick with, to follow closely, join to, overtake, and it also uses the word catch. Now, what am I getting at? When these two come together, they're supposed to cling to, stay close to, cleave together with, keep close to, to stick together or to follow together. Now, that's the Brown's Driver Briggs definition. The Strong's definition we have is a primitive root properly to imping, that is cling or to adhere, figuratively to catch by pursuit, to abide, to fast, to cleave. In the Hebrew alphabet, how are things cleaved or brought together? What Hebrew aleph or alphabet are we using to cleave or to bring things together? Also known as the um, the vowel, the um, the the u, or what you could, but it's a picture of, of a peg or nail. This symbol also too is how the father was able to bring the adulterous woman back into covenant relationship um, with the groom again. When we begin to look at um, how the Mashiach was actually nailed to the tree. He was nailed to the tree um, with nails, and these nails now actually operate as bringing something together. That's a whole other lesson. I just want to bring that out. Looking more into this word, um, debak, uh, it's the dalet, the, uh, the back, and the kaf. It means to pale, P-E-A-L, to pale, to cling. It means joints. Soldering, joining, appendage, joining, soldering, um, open joints of a breastplate. It means to cling, to adhere to, and it then goes up into uh, the next Hebrew word, which is debar, which means the word or to speak. I just wanted to bring that out. <clears throat> now to split apart, when we begin to look at uh, this now from a, a, a medical perspective, Something that is being split apart or uh, divided, um, like an example of like, like mitosis, when we see um, like two cells, like daughter cells, when they begin to split, and we begin to look at the, uh, the human, you know, the genomes and how they, they have uh, like the same genes, but they're, they're, they're splitting. When the man and woman come together, there's a process that happens between those two that actually now brings forth children. We want to talk about that also a little bit. But now, let's go to Moray um, Bereshit 221. Because I just want to put down these two symbols, these three symbols again. 
because they're going to be very important. Very important. Uh, take off? Uh, 221. Yeah, why not? You can go ahead. And Yahuwah caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Okay. So we have Adam. X, Y. This is the metal. Right? That's the metal. There was a division. And what did it say that it took from Adam? Rib. A rib. Look at the word rib. We're talking about um, a chamber or a cell. C E L L. Was taken from Adam. If Adam is X, Y, in order to get a female, we're now dealing with an X, X. All right? X, X. With this splitting now, we now have Adam coming back into consciousness, and these two now, after the splitting of this male, they now become okay. a cod. All right? So I'm just going to look at this now from a Hebraic perspective and see how the Father is talking about now division comes back together again and brings us a cod. And I'll stop right there for now. So we have the male and we have the woman here. <clears throat> what is actually happening in that whole process? Um, Bereshit, the 12th chapter, verse 1 through 2, more right. Well, I'll just get some exercise today. I might as well just keep standing up. I need it anyway. Are we there? Yep. Uh, that's it for me. Bereshit 12, 1 through 2. Bereshit 12. Okay. Watch how this works. Read on. Now the Most High said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Right. What does that sound like? <coughs> Separation. Separation. Right. So we see this same practice now being done with Adam, and we talk about for this cause should a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife. And so in order for the father to have a relationship with you, Sometimes there needs to be a division, a setting apart in order for the father to have a proper relationship with you. And so we see this happening with um, Abraham. The father is now dividing or splitting him from his family and watch what happens. Verse two, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy seed great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Okay. So we talked about what the father is doing with Abraham. He's calling him from or to leave. He's causing a division. And he's leaving his mother and his father. And well, the whole story is that, you know, Tara and, and them, they did come with him. But he's splitting or, or leaving the community. The father wants to show him something greater. So there's a division. And then it now talks about where he's going to now multiply Abraham. All right. And the way that the father is going to multiply Abraham is through Zerah. And Zerah is seed. And we're talking about a particular type of seed. We're talking about the male seed. And we're talking about the sperm there. Okay, so this is how the lineage is actually done. We have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The father calls Abraham. He divides him now from his family. And now through Abraham's seed, the Zerah, he's going to now bring Abraham's seed into a cod. Because Abraham now um, is really like the father or the, um, the first one who comprises now the 12 tribes of Israel. And this comes through the multiplication of a man being with a woman. 
So we see again division, the card, and we see the multiplication. We all told, right? Now, Bereshit, the 35th chapter, verse 10 through 12. Because all of this now is, is, is coming from, I'm, I'm going to go to the basics on how important it is for us to understand Zerah and coming together. Bereshit, the 35th chapter, verse 10 through 12. 35, 10 through 12. Everybody told? Told, told. Bereshit 35, 10 through 12. And Yahuwah said unto him, Thy name is Yaakov. Thy name shall not be called no more Yaakov, mm -hmm. but Yashrael shall be the name, and he called him, and he called his name Yashrael. Yeah. And Yahuwah said unto him, I am Yahuwah Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And the kings shall come out of thy loins. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Hallelujah. So we see again, Jacob being put into a position now where his name is changed. And we begin to look at how Jacob's name was changed now. That he had to, he had to separate himself from, the fam from his family. And Moray, he's going to go through the whole thing about Jacob's ladder and everything like that and how his name was changed from Jacob and the wrestling with the, uh, with the messenger. Moray is going to touch on that. I'm not going to go too much into that. But the reason why, again, we're talking about this division brings us into a card and then goes into multiplication. The reason why, um, again, I, I want to elaborate a little bit more on this is because that formula became a problem to some folks. All right? I hear, see, and investigate a whole lot of things. To the point where, when that male and female come together and understanding responsibility and how the father has set up things from the very beginning, um, what came in question was, when the two come together, whose child is it? Um, there are things that are politically correct and Torah correct. Israel is chronologically um, the registry goes according to C, the male C. This is not to take anything away from the woman. Because we're going to talk about a very important number a little bit later on. Uh, what became the issue is um, I have a right to do whatever it is that I want to do. It's my body. Um, I call it abortion. The politically correct term that likes to be used now is planned parenthood. All right? According to scripture, that takes away from the mathematical equation altogether. What you did prior to coming into the walk is something totally different. Once you come into the walk, you're now responsible. What covers your past sins, I want everybody to understand, is the blood of Yahusha HaMashiach. Like a quote you said now is that if I now go back into the world, every bone and skeleton that I have in my closet, guess what's going to happen? It comes right back. It comes right back. And when the adversary comes back, because you're in this walk, he's going to come back seven times stronger. All right? So again, I have seen people call themselves wrestling with these disagreeable spirits. And these disagreeable spirits, now they take hold of a person. They take hold of a person and then things seem to be going okay. And then after a while, the adversary comes back. Because what happened now that these disagreeable beings now, they see that you're in Torah. And they see that this house has now been cleansed. You're walking in Torah. That spirit that was expelled 
from your body now because these, they're, they're real. It comes back and it wants to go back home again. Mm -hmm. It wants to go back home. But what happens now is that it comes back seven times stronger. And so what we're trying to share now is that make sure that you keep everything he break. Because when you go back into the world and you misunderstand Torah, the instructions of what the Father is trying to do, when you go back out, there's no guarantee that you might be able to make it back in now. Because the adversary is playing for keeps. Mm -hmm. I don't really think people really understand that. There's a mark of the adversary, and there's a mark that the Mashiach is also trying to place on his children. This is all out war. According to scripture, this is scripture now, the adversary knows that he has a short time left. And he's trying to take as many people as he can with him. So again, there's politically correct and there's Torah correct. Now, um, if I can get um, a bot. I have something to show. And maybe this was will spark a little um You replace something? Yes. You, you did it to that speaker you did. Um it'll pick up. I, it, it'll pick up? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's make sure that we got a, a good visual this way. Make let me know when you got it real. Good. And I'm going to turn up the volume. And you should be able to see it on your phones. If anybody is watching online, then you might be able to catch it from here. Um, we was going to try and get a projector screen. Today I'm going to describe a second trimester surgical Perfect. abortion called dilatation and evacuation, or DNE. The DNE is performed between 13 and 24 weeks of pregnancy. Turn it up. Can you turn it up, yeah. yeah, this is up. I got my let me see. Requires that the cervix be prepared 24 okay. to 48. Let's play it again. There we go. Okay, here we go. My name is Dr. Anthony Lavatina. I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist and I've performed over 1,200 abortions. Today I'm going to describe a second trimester surgical abortion called dilatation and evacuation, or DNE. A DNE is performed between 13 and 24 weeks of pregnancy. After administering anesthesia, the abortionist uses a weighted speculum, like this one, that opens the vagina widely. Because second trimester babies are so large, this greater access facilitates a late-term abortion. Late-term abortion requires that the cervix be prepared 24 to 48 hours in advance with laminaria. Laminaria is a type of sterilized seaweed that absorbs water over 8 to 12 hours and swells to several times its original diameter. Watch how this happens. Removed, metal dilators can be used to further open the cervix as needed. Once the cervix has been stretched open, the suction tube is placed inside. A baby at 20 weeks gestation is as big as the length of my hand, from head to rump, not counting the legs. The suction machine is turned on, and pale yellow amniotic fluid surrounding the baby is suctioned out through the catheters. With babies this big, they don't fit through catheters this size. The baby's bones and skull are too strong to be torn apart by suction alone. This is a sofa clamp. A sofa clamp is made of stainless steel. It's about 13 inches long. The business end is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide, and there are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. The abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body. One by one, the rest of the limbs are removed, along with the intestines, the spine, and the heart and lungs. Usually the most difficult part of the procedure is extracting the baby's head, 
which is about the size of a large plum at 20 weeks. The head is grasped and crushed. The abortionist knows he has crushed the skull when a white substance comes out of the cervix. This was the baby's brains. The abortionist then removes skull pieces. He removes the placenta and any leftover parts of the baby with the curette, scraping the lining of the uterus for any remaining tissue. The abortionist then collects the baby parts and reassembles them to make sure that there are two arms, two legs, and all the pieces. Once all the parts have been accounted for, the abortion is complete. For the woman, this procedure carries a significant risk of major complications, including perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix with possible damage to the bowel, bladder, and other maternal organs. Infection and hemorrhage can also occur, which can even lead to death. Future pregnancies are also at greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm Dr. Anthony Levitino, and in the early part of my career as an OBGYN, I performed over 1,200 abortions. One day, after completing one of those abortions, I looked at the remains of a pre-born child whose life I had ended, and all I could see was someone's son or daughter. I came to realize that killing a baby at any stage of pregnancy for any reason is wrong. I want you to know today, no matter where you're at or what you've done, you can change. Make a decision today to protect the preborn. Thank you for your time. Okay, I will no longer do any more abortions. The reason why um, I wanted to share that video is because of um, this disconnect that Israel is having even um, in, in the walk. These, I mean, this particular type of procedure, I think the last time that particular was, procedure was done like in 2003. But my argument is that any um, form of abortion is not biblically correct. This takes away um, from the mathematical equation that we talked about with division, bringing us now back into a card, where the two individuals now come together for multiplication. Because the scripture tells us that the Father said to be fruitful and to multiply. And again, again, whatever it is that a person did prior to the walk, okay then, be done out of ignorance. But when I begin to hear that this practice is being done with sisters and men being also the culprit and telling their ishas that this is what we have to do because we can't afford the child right now, is not Torah at all. Once you come into this walk, it is very important for each and every one of us to understand that all of Torah must be followed. All of it. It is no, I have found no reason why, according to scripture, that these type of abortion um, procedures should be done with any of our women. And if you wanted to get technical with it, and again, just to get technical with it, scripture says a life for a life. All right. Whatever comes out of the matrix, the womb of the woman, the firstborn belongs to the father. And you're going to now take what's born that's created inside of you and abort it. What's supposed to be now dedicated to the father, the consequent, listen, um, good luck with that. You're going to have to deal with that with the father. All right. So again, I just wanted to share some of the, the atrocities that's going on even inside of the walk. Inside of the walk. And people are justifying it. And there's severe consequences to um, this type of behavior. And again, I'm just going to touch on it. And we go into a little bit more about it later. The way that this conception happens is that when you look at scripture, Genesis plus Exodus equals conception and birth. Please pay attention to what I just said. Genesis, the book of Genesis plus Exodus equals conception, birth, and the production of Yahuwah's children. 
Let me just write it down. I want nobody to miss this. All right. Genesis. Make sure we got this right. Genesis plus book of Exodus. All right. Equals conception. And birth of Yahuwah's children. Simply said, the vision brings us into a card to multiplication. Now, I want to talk just a little bit how humans are created, how babies are made. We already know the basics, so we don't have to go through the basics, but I want everybody to know that the human body is made up of cells, okay? Examples, we have muscle cells, we have nerve cells, we have skin cells, etc. Meaning now is that in particular jobs that you might have, being that you're made up of 46 chromosomes, they can take a skin sample, a skin, uh, excuse me, uh, samples from your skin, muscle tissue, hair, and they can analyze it. And guess what it's going to show? It's going to let us know who you are. Okay, these cells, these chromosomes now are comprised of the human makeup of your body that the Father created. You are an energy being, meaning now is that anything that comes from you and is released into a woman, okay, you're leaving just like Zabud and um, yeah. Akoti um, Katriana was sharing with us, and I have a little bit more detail on that. It leaves an imprint on that woman for the rest of her life. When we begin to examine now energy and cells, and how that whole thing is created, and we, we're not going to be able to go through it all today. But you know what? This zera, these cells, and these organisms, and these atoms, because we have to ask ourselves now, do sperm cells contain atoms? All right? So this is a whole lot more complicated than a lot of people might think. We are spiritual beings. That's how the Father created us. And the same um, materials that consist now inside of the universe is now, a lot of it now is even composed inside of the human body. If you were to look at the human body and how it functions, oh wow, it is marvelous. And this can only come into existence through the Father of Yahuwah. Now watch this. <clears throat> uh, muscle cells, nerve cells, skin cells, etc., with the exception now of mature uh, red blood cells. You have the red blood cells, you have the white blood cells. We're not going to go into that today. But it contains a nucleus, except for, again, the matured red blood cells. But they contain a nucleus. And in each nucleus, we have chromosomes. And normally, normally now, a human consists of 46 chromosomes. The example, when a, when a man and woman reproduce, cells are divided. So we get back to this formula again. The division, the akkad, and we have the multiplication. So when the man and the woman come together, there's supposed to be one flesh, akkad. Mm -hmm. But in the coming together of this akkadness, guess what? The man is sharing 23 chromosomes. The woman is sharing 23 chromosomes. They come back together again. These two now multiply and becoming now two became three. Multiplication. This is the formula that the mathematician of Yahuwah is using. It's continuing with being fruitful. Now, again, the man in the arm uh, and the man has 23. The woman she puts, uh, she has her 23 chromosomes. And the, and the coming together, they come together in a card and multiplication. Again, the card, um, the multiplication, Bereshit 221 and 24. Let's prove what I just said there. I was up from 12.30 to 12.45, 5 o'clock this morning, putting this together. 
making sure everything was correct. All right. There is she. 21. Chap mm -hmm. verse, chapter 2, verse 21. Uh-huh, 21 to 24. 24. And Yahuwah caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which Yahuwah had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Hallelujah. Any questions? All right, watch this. These are facts. Therefore shall a man... Uh, okay, my fault. No, you want me to go? No, no, uh, I thought she was done. <laughs> Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Hallelujah. Now, we talked about the man and the woman come to get, coming together and it should be one flesh. <clears throat> Watch these facts here. The word Akkad appears 23 times in the book of Bereshit. The word Akkad appears 23 times in the book of Bereshit, or the book of Genesis. And it appears 23 times in the book of Shemot, the book of Exodus. So, you have 23, 23, if we were to look at this now through with chromosomes, you have a beginning, and we have another set of um, chromosomes, and so these <clears throat> chromosomes gives us 46 chromosomes. My argument is that the father of Yahuwah is actually now the master yes, he is. mathematician. All right, um, doctors, neurologists, whatever you want to call them, don't have a, uh, they don't have a leg to stand when it comes to the father. Now watch this now. When I say that the word Akkad appears 23 times in the book of Bereshit and Genesis, I'm talking about just the plain literal word Akkad. Okay, because the word Akkad now is also attached to other words, but just the simple word one Akkad uh, it appears 23 times in the book of Genesis and 23 times in the book of um, Shemot. Now, let's look at this multiplication process. Moray, if you can read the book of... What did I do? Bereshit 46... Um, 12 to 15. We're almost done because all of this can't be done today. What time is it? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. We started at 2 30, yeah. 3 30. So we should be done in 30 minutes. Um, 46 and 12. Yes. 46 and, yeah, 12 to 15. Bear sheep. Also known as the book of Genesis. Are we there? 46? Yeah. 46 and 12. And the sons of Judah, Ur and Onan and Shelah and Perez and Zarah, but Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamur. Continue. Um... Yeah, yeah, we're going to stop right there, okay? Um, everybody knows the story of, of Jacob and his two wives, Leah and Rachel, but there's also two other women, um, Bela and um, Zilba, right? So watch how this goes here. Jacob, in this relationship with Leah, there was Ju Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishakar, and Zebulon. Reuben's sons were Hanak, Falu, Hezron, Carmi. Simeon's sons were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jaikin, Zohar, Shaul. Levi's son was Jershon, 
Kohath, Mary, Mary Ari, Judah's son now was Ur and Onan. Shelah, Perez, Hezron, Hamo, Zerah. Ishakar's sons were um, Tola, Puva, Job, Shimron. Zebulon's sons were Sered, Elon, Jehalel, and Dinah, which, is, which was a, um, a girl, a female here. When I added all of those children up, I got 34 descendants coming from Leah. Because Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishakar, and Zebulon, they had children, you know, um, but their grandmothers would have been Leah. So we had 34 children. Make sure you write down that number, 34 children. Let's speed it up here a little bit. When you read now, um, Zilpah, 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 Zilpah. Moray, if you can read um, Genesis 46, 18. Let's speed it up here a little bit. So let me just erase this here a little bit. Um, let me know what you're really up to. Okay. So Leah with her sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishakar, and Zebulon, in total with grandchildren and everything like that, we have 34 children. All right? So, Zopa, uh, Genesis 46, 18. These are the sons of Zilpah, who Laban gave to Leah, his daughter. And these she bore unto Yaakov, even 16 souls. Okay, so we have 16 coming from um, Zilpah. Uh, let's go to the book of Genesis 46, 22. 46 and 22. Genesis. And the sons of Benjamin were Bila, Becher, Becher, and Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Mupin, Hupin, and Ard. How many do you have there? These are the sons of Raquel, which were born to ja Jacob. All the souls were 14. More. Yes, sir. Uh, to go back to Leah, shouldn't it be 33? Mm -hmm. Based on 15? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. no. Nope, 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 nope. 34. 34. We're going to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Rachel, so we're now dealing with Bila, right? I'm glad you're paying attention. Uh, Bereshit 46.25. Bereshit 46.25. These are the sons of Bilhah, which Laban gave unto Raquel, his, his, his daughter. And she bare these unto Yaakov. Okay. All the souls were seven. All the souls were seven. All right. What is the total number that you have there? So we have 10, 17, and 17, and 4 is what? 17 and 4? Yes, 6 and 4 is 10. Oh. And 10 and 7 is 17. 17 and 4 is? 21. 21. 21. 3 and 2 is 5, 6, 7. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 71, right? Yep. How many, because these are all the souls, supposedly now, that went into um, Egypt. Now, it made mention now that two of Leah's sons didn't make it. And they were Ur and Onan. Remember, um, they were married to Tamar. And when it came time for um, Onan to go into Tamar, he went into her 
but he spilled his seed. He pulled out and spilled his seed on the ground. And so we now have 71 minus 2, which gives us how many? 69. But how many people now went into Miss Rayim? Where's the other person? Uh, Joseph was already there. Right. We have Joseph and Ephraim and Manasseh already there. Um, Manasseh. Okay. But um, it already made mention of, of Joseph. Okay. Joseph. Was, was already in the list. But what I'm just trying to share here now, we'll go over it next week, but it still brings us back, even with Eph, um, Ephraim and Manasseh, because it's a whole lot of math, but it still gives us the 69, and we'll go over it again next week. But what I just wanted to share here, because I still didn't finish up um, the mathematical equation on um, the 70th person, because some are saying, when I did the research on it, that um, it was possible that maybe... Um, well, Dinah, she wasn't pregnant, but one of the others might have been pregnant, which made the number 70, because we know that the number 70 is also significant with the day of Sukkot, when the first day of Sukkot, you sacrifice 12 bulls. On the second day of Sukkot, there's 12. On the third day, there's 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, until you get to the first day. So it go from the first day of Sukkot to the last day of Sukkot. It's supposed to be a total of 70 bulls being slaughtered, and they said that these 70 bulls represents the 70 nations, which I don't have a problem with. I'm more in tune to believe that the 70 also I mean, represents the 70 souls that went down into Egypt, which is a whole other lesson. But I just wanted to bring to everybody's attention now, when you look at um, Bereshit 46, 26 to 27. Let me just bring that out. We're almost done, Mr. Picard, because we're going to have to really dig into... Um, this other person here. And the reason why, again, we took off Onan and um, Ur, that should tell us that in the book of Bereshit 46, 26, and 27. Correct. Didn't Joseph have two kids? Yeah, Ephraim and Manasseh, but they were already in Egypt. Oh, okay. There wasn't, they didn't go into go Egypt into yet. Egypt, I see. Right, and so they was already there. But, you know, because, you know, it was the famine and the brothers, they go, yeah, yeah they, they, they went there. All the souls, Genesis, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. 46, 26 through 28, 27, please. 26 to 27. All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins mm -hmm. beside Jacob's sons, beside Jacob's sons, wives, all the souls were three, four, and six. That's 66 people. So... When you add Joseph, that's 67, Ephraim, 68, Manasseh, 69. We need to find out who that other person is. You know what? And the souls of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt. In Egypt already, okay. Were two souls. And the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Mizraim, were three score and ten. Okay, three scores and ten. Three scores and ten. Anybody know what that number? Uh, Seventy. Seventy. Hallelujah. So we have to figure out the seventy, and there's a lot of different ways that you can go with it. Uh, we're going to leave that alone for right now. What I want to do is talk about again the mathematical equation with two sons, Onan and Ur, being killed because. Onan, he was a mean guy, and then the brother now goes into her, and again, just for pleasure, he didn't want to um, produce any children. He pulls out and spills his sperm, his seed on the ground. So we now have 32. All right? It's 32. Leah has a total now of 32 descendants, and these are all, these are direct bloodlines. Leah has 32. She is a wife. Zilpa is a, a concubine or a handmaiden. Bella is also a concubine or a handmaiden. When you add 32 and 14, from these two wives, you get the number 46, which is 46 chromosomes. 
when you now go to Rachel and excuse me, I'll go to Zoka and Bela. She has 16. And we have Bella having seven, which gives us 23 chromosomes, or the number 23. What I'm just trying to share here now is that the way that the Father plays, I mean, the whole numbers thing, everything's with numbers. The seven being the Shabbat, the number 10 being um, um, at one minute or atonement. We have the significance of um, the number 10 in the book of... Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, where you now take the lamb on the first day, which is the beginning of the year, and then on the 10th day, you have you set the lamb apart and make sure that the lamb is all nice and prepared, there's no bones broken, anything like that. And then on the 14th, um, uh, between the two evenings, you then slaughter the lamb, and then on the 15th, now you eat the unleavened bread with the lamb on the 15th, and then you have the three days of, of the Mashiach um, in the ground, and then we have the number 70, also representing the time that Israel was in the Babylonian captivity. We have the whole thing on how to count the numbers of, of, of the Jubilees. All of this is math. All of this is math, which is another form of communication that the Father is trying to have with the nation of Israel on how to keep time, how he's operating, how the human body functions. Everything is based upon numbers. Ask yourself, how is it now that we breathe in oxygen and let out carbon? But what does that? What keeps your human body, okay, regulating at a temperature of 98.6, 98.7? What's doing that? What's doing it? The Father is so unique. This mathematical equation that he's using to put the body together. How can you not respect the Father? Mm. How? It's simply amazing. When we begin to look at energy, there's a formula to all of that. The chromosomes, the cells, um, the nucleus, all of that is there's a there's a numeric value to all of it in order for you to function. And guess what? If one thing is off balance, you will not be able to function properly. It's called a dis-ease. But if you say it real quick, disease. Mm -hmm. But it's a dis-ease inside of your body. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why they have to keep an eye on your blood pressure. They have to keep an eye on your um, on, 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 on almost everything inside of your body. Sugar. Cholesterol, your sugar, all these things. Now they're watching numbers. Yep. It's all numbers. One eight, one what is one one twenty over. Yeah, yeah, and so Mitch Ricard, um, this number thing is so important. How many plagues did the father strike Egypt with before Israel came out of Mizraim? How many plagues did he hit um, the Egyptians with? Ten. Ten. Ten, right. Watch how beautiful this is. Because I talked about Genesis plus the Exodus gives us conception and birth. Once a woman hits ten centimeters, guess what? She can have a baby. It's time for her to have a baby. <laughs> Look at the ten plagues. Versus uh, now the 10 uh, centimeters, it was a the doctor keeps <laughs> it was a checking. He keeps checking. Know what? 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters. Listen, you know what? Everybody out of here. Let's get the gloves ready. It's about time for this woman to, to give birth. These numbers don't lie. Wow. They don't lie. And it was a birth of a nation. Yeah. It was a birth. And then what comes out is, you know what? Get them out of here. <laughs> Pharaoh said, they got to go. Let, they got to go now. It's the same thing what happens with the woman. Those contractions get so big because it's now 10 centimeters. She says, listen, get this thing out of me. It's caused me so much pain. Get it out of me. 
But it's the same analogy if you know how to put the pictures together. Mm -hmm. 10 plagues, 10 centimeters, get her out of here. The woman said the same thing, get her out of here. Mr. Right. Carr, I pray that everybody needs to gather something from today's lesson. All right, and understanding the fathers, he is the great mathematician and looking at the body and how it functioned here just a little bit. And if it be the father's will, we're going to take it a step further next week. I want to say yeah, something. I want to yes. say something, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. And look at the whole situation, how we came out of Israel. It had the blood and you had the water. Yeah. It was absolutely. really like a real pregnancy. It was yeah. Like a real birth taking place. Absolutely. When we left out there with the blood and the water. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and that is so important because just like Maury is sharing with us, even when the Mashiach was on the, uh, was on the tree and the soldier came and pierced the side of the Mashiach, what two things came out? Blood and water. Blood and water. All right, so we can't make this stuff up. All right? Are there any questions? Anybody have anything on, um, on the, the, the Facebook? No, I'm just told. Nothing on Facebook. Okay, hallelujah. So, Mr. Picard, what we're going to do is that we're going to say Shabbat Shalom to our family out there in, um, in Facebook, in um, YouTube, and this also gets broadcast on um, our public access channel. And so we just pray if anybody have any questions, you know, please let us know. Um, the name of the, uh, the congregations. Is he, yeah, let me just put that down. Also, if anybody wants to um, do a free will, free will donation, just get in contact with me at New Study. New Age at no New Study New oh, New Age at AOL.com. And also, Pesach is going to be April the 3rd, and next Shabbat we'll be giving out more information on that. But so far, we're allowed uh, a seating capacity of how many? 55, but we can go up to 80. 55, but we can go up to 80. So next week, um, things are going to be going real, real fast. So if anybody have anything um, up front, please let us know. Give me a call at... or. Inform me at new study new age at AOL.com. We can talk about it a little bit more. But right now, we just going through the preliminaries. But we have April the 3rd, sundown, beginning Pesach. Uh, oh, really? Question for those who might want to be able to come. Uh, they need to talk with you first. Yeah, you got the new study new age at AOL.com. So we can go through the preliminaries so that uh, it gives everybody. Um, the proper time to get the, um, the funds together, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later or throughout the course of the week. Let everybody know what the price is so that we can have a nice time. I'm in for Shabbat. <laughs> Say that again? I was talking about for Shabbat class. Okay. Uh, I think there was someone online before who had <clears throat> asked where we fellowship, and uh, you know, it might be better if they just go through you first. Right, yeah, because we'll, um, Those were on my yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. If anybody wants to attend a congregation um, here in Georgia, uh, again, this is what you do first. Go to New Study, New Age at AOL.com, and uh, we'll do it from there. Or they can message us on the, on the Facebook page. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to be um, uplifting that, giving out a facelift. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, um, again, any questions? Anything? All right, hallelujah. I'm going to blow the shofar seven times, and we'll have the man in the house to end us with prayer.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, once again, we thank you for meeting us here, Father, and allowing us to have a, an awesome Shabbat, Father. The lesson was phenomenal as usual, Father, whether it's Moray uh, Kasadaba, Moray Aliyahu speaks, or whoever it is else that you bring unto us, Father, to speak. Father, we thank you for Yeremi Yahu sitting in, Father, and uh, actually offering some great, great, great uh, uh, dialogue. We thank you and praise you and magnify you and lift you up and ask that you to look in upon our brothers who are scattered, the Israelites who are scattered throughout the world, and ask that you would just baruch them, give us traveling graces back home to our several days of destination when we choose to leave. We thank you, praise you, magnify you, lift you up. Hallelujah. 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 And hallelujah. Bless the field. Bless the field, everybody. Thank you for our body, soul, spirit, mind, all of the stuff. Hallelujah. All right. Rise, Peter Slaney. All right. Tada, tada, big brother, tada. Hallelujah.